In a previous video, I built this Aeolian harp. It's just a box with strings on it. And you're supposed to be able to put it in your window and wind will blow through and cause the strings to vibrate. And these things sound fantastic if you actually take it outside into a windy environment. But if you just place it in your window, it might make a little bit of sound for a few seconds every now and then. But in general, even when the wind is blowing really hard outside, wind isn't just going to spontaneously blow into your window, especially if this is the only window that's open. That's kind of not how wind works. And so I'd like to build a new instrument that's played not by wind blowing through, but by electromagnetism blowing through using a device similar to an Ebo or a Sustainiac, which guitarists among you might be familiar with. And I'd like to call this new instrument a Fulgorian harp, because Aeolus was the Greek god of wind, and Fulgora was the Roman goddess of not being at the mercy of any Greek gods or something. And this project has turned out to be a little bit more involved than I initially thought, and for that reason, I'm going to break this up into a multi-part video series. And today what I'd like to accomplish is that I'd like to build a prototype of one of these guitar sustainer circuits and see if I can't get at least just one string vibrating with electromagnetism. And to start with, because of the way these things work, I'm going to need to put metal strings on my instrument. And then I'm going to need two coils of wire. And I'll explain the physics of how these coils actually work in my next video in this series. But for now, I'll just say that one is an input coil, which I'm going to use as a sensor to detect the string's movement, the same as a guitar pickup does. And the other one is an output coil Coil, which I'm going to use as an actuator to actually physically push and pull on the string. And I'm going to need to connect these coils together with some kind of an amplifier. And I'm going to use the amplifier to just amplify the crap out of the input coil. So if it detects, for instance, that the string is moving a little bit in one direction, then the output coil will push as hard as it can in that direction, and vice versa. And for the coils, I'm going to use these little buzzer things. And that's because I saw a video by Ivan Kuznetsov where he was using these. And the spoiler is that these do work, but not very well. And so also in a future video, I'm going to show you how to improve upon these. But these make a good starting point anyway. And these are basically like little speakers with a metal diaphragm so they can make a really loud buzzing noise. But of course, I don't want them to make that sound, so I'm going to cut out the little metal diaphragm and just remove it. And the actual coil of wires then is inside of there. And I don't know how well you can see this, but the coil is actually recessed down in the plastic housing by maybe a millimeter or something. And as silly as it sounds, that extra millimeter of space is going to be important later. So I'm going to sand down the plastic housing as far as I can. And so here are my two coils with the part numbers displayed. And the one on the right I'm going to use is my input coil. And the one on the left is my output coil. And I'll disassemble this just a little bit further so you can see what it is. The coil of wires is in the middle there. And then on the outside is this ring magnet. And the ring magnet has, I guess that's the south pole facing up and the north pole facing down. So it's kind of magnetized like this. So now I need some kind of amplifier. So this guy named Vegas Cycling Freak actually reverse engineered the Ebo, which has the amplifier I need in it. And it turns out that this is the circuit that's inside. And this isn't the amplifier that I'm going to use ultimately, but a lot of people seem to be both curious and confused about this. And I'm not sure that its operation has ever been properly described, so I'll do that now. So the actual amplifier chip is the almighty LM386, and it's powered by a 9-volt battery. And the negative input terminal is connected to ground, and then the input coil is connected to the positive input terminal of the amplifier. So this will be a non-inverting amplifier. And the LM386 is unusual in that placing a capacitor here sets the gain to 200. And that's normally the highest gain that you can get with this chip. Although this circuit also has this 
positive feedback network, which effectively sets the gain to infinity. So if the guitar string drives the voltage across the input coil, even very slightly positive or negative, then the output of the amplifier will be as high or as low as it can possibly be. And nobody seems to know what value this resistor is supposed to be, and I also don't know. I'll confess that I actually never got this working. I tried every value of resistor that I had, and nothing works. However, this circuit does work just fine if you just completely remove this resistor. Then the gain is only 200, which means that this circuit doesn't start notes quite as fast as it should, but once a note is being sustained, the gain of 200 is fine. So then of course the amplifier's output is capacitatively coupled into the output coil, and so then there's also this business of harmonic mode. So the EBO has this switch on it, and when the switch is in the position labeled harmonic mode, then any current that's flowing through the output coil can't go this way because this is just a dead end, and it also can't go this way because the diode is blocking it. So it has to go down this way through this other capacitor, and this extra capacitor has the effect of shifting the current through the output coil forward by 90 degrees relative to the input coil, and evidently that suppresses the string's fundamentals so you hear more of the overtones and higher harmonics. Conversely, when the switch is in regular mode, the current can and will just flow this way since it's a short circuit to the battery, and it won't flow through that extra capacitor. So the capacitor, and consequently the 90 degree phase shift, is only in effect when the switch is in harmonic mode. And then there's also this diode down here, which people also seem to be confused about. People seem to think that maybe this also has something to do with harmonic mode, which it doesn't. This is only here to connect the negative terminal of the battery to ground. And so just for the sake of illustration, consider this LED over here. When current flows through it, where does it go? I mean, the electrons aren't just going to fall out into the bottom of the diagram. Somehow this has to make it back to the negative terminal terminal of the battery, and when the switch is in harmonic mode, the current just flows this way back to the battery. However, when the switch is in regular mode, the current can't go that way because again this is just a dead end, so actually the current goes this way and flows up through that diode and back to the battery that way. And so really the only purpose of this diode is to connect the battery to ground without also allowing the amplifier's output to flow down that way. And this is kind of brilliant? but it's also kind of stupid, I don't know. And there's nothing really special about the Evo, you just need some kind of really high gain amplifier. In fact, I designed several different amplifiers over the course of playing with this, and you'll see me using them kind of interchangeably later in this video, and I hope you're not too disturbed by continuity errors. But if you want a circuit that's not patented, Here's one, and this is based on the TLV4111. You can't just use any op amp for this, you need one that's capable of supplying maybe a few hundred milliamps of current, which this one is, and LM386 is also. And this one I'll power with 5 volts, which means that if you're using a 9 volt battery you might have to regulate it down, and that could be annoying. But anyway, then I use a voltage divider to bias the positive input up to 2.5 volts, and I connect my input coil into the negative input, so this will be an inverting amplifier. And that implies that you're going to need to switch the polarity of one of the coils relative to the other one, although it's true of both amplifiers that you need to be careful about the polarity of the coils. And for the gain network, I just slapped in the hugest resistor that I had laying around, and if you're used to looking at these, you might expect to see another resistor kind of buggering off down this way but in this circuit, the resistance of the input coil actually serves that purpose. And so if you work out the math on this, you'll find that this, I guess, technically has a gain of 200,000, which is kind of ridiculous, and probably not actually correct, but the exact value doesn't really matter. You just want some huge gain so you can drive the output of the amplifier as high and low as possible, as quickly as possible. And then, of course, I have the 
the amplifier's output going into the output coil. And I guess if you wanted to recreate the EBO's harmonic mode, you just whack in another capacitor down here. That's all it does. And here's what that circuit actually looks like in real life. The thing on the left is a 5 volt regulator, and then the actual amplifier is on the right there. So yeah, let's see how this sounds. So this very strongly favors the string's fundamental, even if I try to force it to play harmonics. So here I'll add in an extra harmonic mode capacitor. And now you hear it kind of cycling through overtones. And this is also strong enough to play some of the thicker low strings. Yeah, so that actually sounds really good, but it sounds a lot better recorded through a contact mic like that than it really sounds in real life. Here's what it sounds like through my camera's microphone. And so I think you can hear one of the problems is that these coils are just really, really weak. And consequently, the whole thing doesn't work unless the coils are really close to the string. So close, in fact, that once the string gets going, it'll be buzzing against the coils. And this is why I also sanded a millimeter off the top of the coil to begin with. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that if you built one of the circuits that I showed you, and it's not working, I guarantee you it's because the coils aren't close enough to the string. And just for the sake of posterity, I want to show you that the 16 ohm output coil is being driven at just a little more than 2 volts RMS, which works out to be about 300 milliwatts of power. And this is what the waveform looks like that's driving the output coil. And you can see it's basically a square-ish wave, because it's pretty much always at either the maximum or minimum output value of the amplifier, and it just looks a little bit slopey because of the capacitors in there. Yeah, so that's certainly encouraging progress, but also obviously there's still a lot of work left to do. But I think that's a good stopping point for now, and what I'd like to do next time is see if I can't get several strings vibrating at once, and what I might do is get rid of these little coils that I'm using and try to get some proper guitar pickups and see if I can't use a pickup to vibrate several strings at the same time. But I think that's a good stopping point for now, so thank you as usual so much for watching my videos and please subscribe and like and comment and all that kind of crap really does help me and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye!